Hey guys, welcome back. So in the previous lesson, you've studied and learned <clears throat> my philosophy, my experience of the origin story or the order within which creation goes from its most original, infinite, stateless, non-state to execute itself in a form of free awareness to generate that freedom, that freedom of consciousness, that freedom of movement, that freedom of awareness, the actionable form of infinity so that it can start to generate, using this infinite intelligence, experiences for itself, of itself, through itself, by itself, for itself. This free agency then, this free awareness, this infinite intelligence, which is the immediate offspring of infinity itself, of absolute unity, oneness, infinity itself, this infinite free awareness now uses its intelligence to generate, in a sense of force field, an energy field that is unconditional love. It's reflective, it's reflective of infinity. It's reflective of unity. Because since the one is just the one, and there is only one, and there is only unity, and there is only infinity, and infinity by definition has to be unity, because separation or duality is a finite concept. So the one, the unity, has to be unity. Infinity has to be unity. Now, to reflect this infinity, the first creation that this free agency, this free awareness generated is this field of unconditional love, because that's what unity is. Unity recognizes all aspects of itself as itself. And that is what love is, to see yourself in everything you see. So on a universal absolute scale, that's what free awareness is doing. That's what the free agency is doing. Awareness is seeing itself as everything. So the first emanation, the first manifestation of coming from the unmanifest infinite intelligence that is free awareness now generates an infinite type of energy or a field of unconditional love. This unconditional love is manifest, but it's so subtly manifest that it holds the potential for all possible forms, meaning it's not yet collapsed. It's still very spacious, it's still very undefined. It's very formless, it's very universal, it's all pervasive love, unconditional potential. Now, intelligence or free awareness utilizes its intelligence to work its magic towards its power and its, its vision onto this field of infinite endless potential or unconditional love. And it starts generating patterns of light, patterns of energy, so that experience becomes visible, experience becomes tangible, experience becomes experiential. And it starts to diversify itself, diversify itself, create patterns of patterns of patterns of patterns of patterns, of patterns kind of like a fractal idea, a universal fractal creation. And so it diversifies and diversifies and even generates different diversifications of its own eyeness turning into I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, one of which is you. So from this love light field, then everything is created that has form and specificity. So this was this was just briefly to recap the previous lesson, figured it couldn't hurt. And now what I want to get into a little bit is the idea that everything is love slash light in vibration, everything is love light in vibration. Love light is simply another way of saying presence energy. It's the same thing. Presence energy is love light. So this love light or presence energy, the substance, the essence, the substratum of all form of all of creation of all anything that has form anything that has appearance is made out of this fundamental core presence energy or love light. This means that every single thing you experience, every seeming object that appears inside of your consciousness, inside of your awareness, is actually made out of nothing but love light. This is an interesting concept, because I'm sure you've heard many spiritual people say, um, love light, I send you love, I send you light. I don't think many people realize exactly what they're talking about. But fundamentally, what it comes down to, at least when I say that, is we're talking about the substance, the very core, the very essence, the very healing, the very 
perfect nature of all of creation itself. So when we share love light with each other, in a sense, what we're doing is we're, we're amplifying the recognition of the fundamental basic energy that connects and combines and unifies all that we are. It heals everything that is, that needs to be healed, quote unquote healed. Healing doesn't really exist, but for the purpose of transmuting or uh, transmitting an energy sensation, healing is a beautiful word. So the love light, when we send love light, things heal, things realign, things become rooted again in that core substratum of existence or presence itself. So what I want you to experience in this lesson or get clearer, a clearer perspective, a clearer experience of is the fact that everything you ever experience, including what you would call physical matter, is actually love light in a particular vibratory pattern. So take the basics of the basis of existence, which we've now discovered is presence energy or pure love light. This love light at its absolute level, we could say is vibrating at the frequency of unconditional love and unconditional light. Now, what we see in everyday life, like a laptop, like a camera, like a pen, like a rock, like other people, physical bodies, those things all seem so physical to us, but they're actually not. And if you followed enlightenment to the emptiness lesson, you have gotten a sense of how what seems like physical appearances are actually empty appearances. However, so it seems solid to us. Physical reality seems solid to us. It seems physical. It seems dense. It seems like it's made out of matter, out of actual physical molecules. But what are those actual physical molecules made out of? Out of actual physical atoms, which we know are not really physical. They're more like non-physical. And what are these made out of, et cetera, et cetera. Subatomic particles, quarks. So the list goes on in that sense. And there is no end to the diversification or the um, to the non-physicality of energy inside of seemingly physical material. So what seems physical to us, what seems solid to us is nothing but love light at a certain vibration. In a sense, we could say having crossed its own path so many times that it has seemingly become dense and physical. The analogy I use to explain this often, it's a little hard to explain, it's a very abstract, intuitive concept. When I say love light is crossing its own vibratory path, its own pathway, its own um, pattern, until it starts to sort of stack up on top of itself, meet itself, intersection, 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 until that nodal point of non-physical energy starts to appear physical. It's a little hard to explain, but one way you can imagine this is by using the analogy of a spider web. Now let's say that a spider, as it's making its web, the web itself represents a non-physical single vibration. So a single string of its web represents a single vibration of love light, a non-physical vibration, just an energetic vibration. In a sense, like your Wi-Fi is an energetic non-physical vibration, right? So now the spider, starts to create a web and it has to at some point cross its own path, meaning that the same wavelength, the same pattern of energy, the same vibration of love light starts to cross its own path. And now imagine that the spider would be a little delirious and would not be quite aligned. It would start to, in this analogy, it would start to cross its own path over and over and over and over again in the same spot, let's say in the center of the web, it completed a web, but now it starts to cross its own path, cross its own path, cross its own path in the same location. So what starts as a single, as a single intersection now starts to become a nodal point, starts to become a, a cloth of sorts where all the non-physical energy, where the single vibration of that web has been so condensed that it is now sort of tight, it can no longer vibrate as fast and freely as it wants to because it's surrounded by itself. It's condensed by itself. It's caught in its own web, in a sense. Physical reality is non-physical vibratory energy, is love, light, energy, in a vibratory pattern that keeps, in a sense, repeating itself or crossing its own path until it becomes seemingly dense and physical. 
and slow. That's why it becomes visible to our quote unquote physical eyes because it's slow. We don't see fast vibrations. We only see what has been condensed and what has crossed its path over and over again. Now we can expand that window of consciousness and start to perceive more non-physical energy. But for the purpose of this analogy, all I want you to realize is that even physicality is nothing but love light in a particular vibratory pattern. So again, as with anything, as with any realization I share, it doesn't really help you it helps you a little bit to have a clear understanding and a clear vision of how things work and analogies can definitely help uh, things sink in to your being and become more convinced of what I'm sharing and how life actually works energetically. However, the most palpable and transformative will always be direct experience. So for the purpose of this lesson, the homework is that you sit down uh, meditative style for like 15 minutes and you focus on physicality for a moment but what you notice or what you focus on or what you imagine is that somehow physicality so you can pick an object you can pick a rock you can pick a room you can pick a door in your room you can pick your own body doesn't matter but you sit down you relax your mind take a deep breath give away all distractions for a moment and now you start seeing physicality itself, let's say the door in your room, as being made out of light. Or you could say, if you want to, love light. Just somehow imagine in a way that works for your particular makeup, your particular belief system, your brain, if you will. Just come up with an analogy or a visualization. And I cannot really share any because there's infinite ones and you have to sort of come up with the one that is most natural to you because that will be most effective. Whatever your imagination comes up with is perfectly aligned for your belief systems to be transformed, your perception to be expanded. So tune into yourself and imagine in whatever way you can, using whatever permission slips or analogies that you need to, to get a sense of how that physical door or that physical rock or your physical body or the universe at large or planet Earth, doesn't matter, how it's made out of light, how it's light in condensed form. Just like eyes, when we look at eyes, it's hard to imagine that it's actually steam, right? We wouldn't really say that, oh, a block of ice, no, I can see that as steam is very solid, it's very physical. I can't see the H2O inside of it, but you can. So water is simply condensed steam, steam that has tightened its pathway and crossed its own path over and over and over, over again until it has become this solid block of ice. It has slowed down its vibratory state of the molecules in this analogy to the point where it becomes ice. Now, when you look at a piece of ice, it's kind of hard initially to imagine that it is actually, in essence, steam-like H2O. So, nevertheless, imagine that physicality, molecules being clump together and forming what we call a door and emitting certain types of colors or reflecting certain types of colors is actually itself made out of light vibration. In whatever way works for you, start tapping into that experience that physicality is actually light vibrating at a certain pace, at a certain frequency that is non-physically undetectable to most of us, but that's actually so condensed and so in a sense has lowered its vibration. Light has lowered its vibration to the point where it has become seemingly static material. But really, even inside of the seemingly static material, vibrations are still going off at a slower pace than pure non-physical energy or pure light, pure love light, but still. You can start to see objects, you can start to feel and experience objects as being love light energy in a particular vibratory frequency state. So whatever works for you, try to somehow get a sense of this, get a glimpse of this. Understand that it might seem difficult, but if you simply remove that definition from your mindset, that it is difficult, and simply open yourself up that everything is made out of love light and that you're living in this fairy tale magical projection of consciousness, this emptiness creation, this love light unconditional creation, and you be in that state and suddenly it becomes more easy to accept the fact that matter is actually made out of light 
and you can start to notice it, feel it, recognize it, experience it, and even tap into it and communicate with the light that has formed itself as an object. So I encourage you, if this is not entirely clear to you, to share your results and your challenges in the study group so that other people can help you with whatever analogies worked for them, whatever visualizations worked for them, whatever they imagined that allowed them to get a real sense of the fact that matter is actually love light in vibration, in a certain state of vibration. So I really encourage you, especially for this lesson, to share it. If you have any type of challenges and you want to refine even further your sense of knowing that everything is love light in vibration, that you share this exercise, your results of this exercise, your observations of this exercise, and your questions and challenges that you had during this exercise with your fellow adepts in the community um, study group. So do that and enjoy and maybe listen to this recording once more before you start the next lesson and believe in your ability to utilize your consciousness directly to experience vibration, to experience love life more and more. Imagination is key. Imagination will t tune you into whatever it is you wish to realize. So use your imagination creatively in a way that allows you to channel the feeling that things are made out of love, light, energy, and vibration.